Hey there, Postal here. So today we're looking at a plane that I had previously um, not posted a video on a long time ago about not particularly liking. And um, I wanted to post a video on how much I've changed my mind in that aspect. Let's take a look at the Tier 10 uh, British fighter, the Swift. Alright, so what is the Swift? Well, the reason I didn't like it when I first was playing this game is because as I was going down the um, UK Spitfire line, which is the first line I ever went down, you have the same plane basically from tier 4 up to tier 8. Uh, pretty darn turny, gets even more turny as you get higher. Um, the Spitfire line is really good. Um, not the best altitude performance, but not terrible. Really strong Hispano guns and um, not the most turny but can get you out of a pinch most of the time. You get to the attacker which is a plane that I did keep and um, you lose a lot of that um, turniness but not all of it and um, your guns are still Hispanos, they're still really strong. You get a huge significantly um, big jump with airspeed and a decent jump up with altitude performance. But then you get here to the swift and, I mean, it looks like a quintessential jet, right? I mean, it looks like if you drew a jet as a five-year-old, this would be <laughs> like what one would look like, but much more smoother and awesome looking. Um, but it's nothing like the Spitfire line that I grew on uh, when I first started playing the game. So I really, really didn't like it. The maneuverability is pretty poor. Um, I mean, yeah, the airspeed's significant. The altitude performance is great. Um, but the guns are completely different and the maneuverability disappeared. Uh, but today I want to go over, you know, what the differences are and why this plane is still a really good plane. If you change your mentality about what you're in, I think is the biggest change. So, the guns are two his um, so good gracious, they're two Aidens, uh, 30 mils. They're super strong hitting. Uh, they're the same guns that you actually get on all the tier 10 um, British planes. The Hunter, the Javelin, heck, even the P228 has these guns. They just have four of them. Um, they're relatively slow firing, um, at least compared to Hispanos. Um, you know, the rate, the rate of fire is 300, but I just feel like sometimes planes kind of go th between the bullets and it can be kind of frustrating. So because of that, I built this plane to have accuracy, which I tend to have on all my, my um, planes, but I even went so far as to have Marksman 1 and Marksman 2 on this particular pilot. I decided not to go for a full speed build, and I'll explain that in just a moment. I actually put some maneuverability on here, and that's because it doesn't take away from the speed, so I can still get my roll and maneuverability built up. Um, it weakens the hit points of the plane and the resistance to damage, but one of the bonus characteristics was actually a bonus increase to damage, so um, resistance to damage, so that actually kind of helps that a little bit. Hit points I'm not too worried about. I'm in a light fighter. I don't have hit points anyway, so I'm not worried about it. Um, I put the lightweight power unit on here for better maneuverability. The engine's resistance to critical damage is, is unfortunately impacted by that, but it actually helps the cruise speed on the bonus characteristics. When we're looking at this particular plane compared to the other Tier 10 light planes, at least the ones that I have, um, you know, the airspeed is really what significantly um, stands out for this particular plane. Um, yeah, the maneuverability and altitude performance even are better on the um, on the Sabre, but the airspeed and the gun armor is going to keep me um, separated from that particular plane. The altitude performance and airspeed are both, a, I mean the altitude performance is a little bit less, but the airspeed is definitely a lot less on the ME. And the um, same goes for the key. It's not known for its airspeed. Key is kind of like a mid uh, range between the Yak 30 and all the altitude performers that we've got here. Now we are going to be, um, you know, eventually having a MiG 15, so we'd want to compare this particular plane to a MiG 15, all things considered. And when you look at that, the Swift actually is the fastest of the grouping, right? So the altitude performance is significantly higher on the MiG, much like it is on the F 86A but you're actually going to be able to outspeed just about everything out there. 
The reason I wanted to put a, a maneuverability uh, kind of buff on the Swift is because I've already got airspeed. I don't need more airspeed. I can hang with a lot of the fastest planes out there, especially light fighters, but even a lot of the heavy fighters I can stick with. Um, so that's why I went that way, and that way I can try to get these guns on target a little bit better. Yeah, but let's take a look at this plane in game and see what uh, what made me kind of change my mind when it came to um, the Swift. I don't know him specifically, but ran into him quite a few times, and my kids are loud. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, unfortunately, he's on the enemy team, so we'll just have to deal with it. Uh, first things first, let's go ahead and get a comm center. Now this plane really uh, excels at attacking heavies, uh, honestly. Um, bombers, we're going to find out, but heavies typically. Anything uh, that can maneuver a little bit too much is not going to be uh, its friend. So like, I'm going after these guys right now. It's not really what I want to be going after, but it is what it is. Thank you. Let's go ahead and boost on back up here. It looks like we're already doing some damage to the ground, which is definitely a good thing, considering you can't get a comm center without getting the ground damage taken care of. All right, so let's go be a pain in the butt. Let's use our a significant speed to get over to the mining facility. Uh, do what we can to interrupt them. And we're going to find out how well we go against uh, bombers, shall we? Tier 12, so it's not tier 10 at least. Might not make a difference because if it's um, rear gunner on this plane is pretty decent. Thank you. I've got some multi rolls. Oh, and a ground pounder. So let's get rid of the multi roll first, just because he can outmaneuver. Uh, he can't outmaneuver me, but he can certainly outmaneuver a ground pounder. My goodness, I go too fast. Kind of a struggle with this particular plane is an odd struggle to have, right? Trying to slow down enough to keep your guns on target on the slower airplanes. Thank you. Got, got the uh, garrison, which I wasn't even trying to get. Uh, I'm going to save up our boost. We need to go for... This sector, you putzes. Where is that ground pounder? Seriously? Oh, there he is. Make a nice wide arc. Uh, they might actually be able to get this um, mining facility without. Just keep coming um, perpendicular to him. Because um, his rear gunner is going to tear me up if I'm parallel. That's math. I'm parallel anyway because he turned. It's okay. Got a hunter here we need to take care of as well now. It uh, looks like that uh, ground pounder's toasted. No, not like that. And you kind of just tap these guns. If you, you've seen me already, um, unfortunately you can overheat them relatively easily. Um, such is life with 30s. Let's use our cooling boost here to get this TU-12 if I can. Trying to slow down again already. Just so much speed with this thing. So I mean that's a good thing. Nothing's really going to get away. Only a very few of things are going to get away. Um, so I've killed everything at this mining facility, and then some. And let's go ahead and oh, another bomber coming in. And a multi-roll. So let's take care of this bomber here. Ouch! Forgot they've got a forward gun, don't they? So I don't really need to speed up, I just need to turn around. And this is why I happen to have the um, maneuverability build. Oh, you stupid idiot. 
on this plane is so I can get back behind these guys quicker. <sighs> Frustration. So, I think my kids are like playing Power Rangers or something downstairs. Um, so we've got, good, they've got that taken care of. Let's get back over here. And first we're going to knock out this uh, heavy fighter if I can, and then we're going to move on to that mining facility, because apparently none of our team wants to take over that mining facility. Get about everything I can. Uh, unfortunately, you're in a light fighter, right? So your ability to do any kind of ground damage is going to be tempered for sure. Uh, these 30s can take out like soft targets if you need to get like one target to flip a flip a sector, um, but they're definitely not going to be able to get um, heavily armored ground targets. Ah, uh, shucks. All right, so unfortunately, yeah, he out altituded us. That's a word, and that's okay. We scared him away from the sector. Let's go ahead and get Todd here. Knock out this hunter if I can. I need to slow down. Nice. So we've got that. Now this this HG's back. Got another HG. Let's get the HG3 first. This would be the one. HG2 you can actually stick with relatively well. HG3 I'm sticking with okay since he's obviously lost some momentum. Perfect. What do we got here? We've got... Let's get rid of this light fighter if we can. And we'll go over and see if we can do anything about those bombers. Oh my god. Shame on me. Luckily we've got the momentum, so we just keep that momentum going. And we're going to go back over to this bomber. I really want to get the bomber, not the um, not the heavy fighter, so we'll do that. We're actually going to have to slow down quite a bit. Again. Got the command centers are ours. And I think the Power Rangers game went south. Awesome! We finally have the mining facility. Man, we've got this HG3 coming in again. We've got everybody over here, it kind of seems like. That's okay. I'm trying to protect my bomber, even though he's just one of those 15,000 foot bomber dudes. Keep my guns cool down. If I can keep my guns cool down, he's going to be toast. Excellent. Tried to get away, got up to 15,000 feet. I was able to keep my momentum at that time. Obviously a lot better than last time. Uh, we got a bunch of multi-rolls. Unfortunately, that they're F-84s, which are pretty maneuverable, especially compared to me. Um, but let's get the guy in the back first. I want to get the low hit point guy first, if I can. Dang it. Alright, use my boost. Boost on out of town. Turning around just because I think I've got the momentum for him. We obviously do. Watch out for this guy and his 20 or 23 or whatever the heck it is on the front. Oh, he's not even facing me. That's fine. Nice. Come on. Yowzers, don't crash into him. You flip and crackerjack twice in one game. Holy cow, Postal. I need to get used to that uh, speed again, don't I? Uh, hopefully all our people don't die. Make sure our uh, bot knows, I mean our bot, our bomber knows not to die. Oh good, we won anyway. And there you go, did I get my flying? I got flying warrior, not flying paladin. Well, that's fine. So this shows, uh, you know, what you can do in this particular plane. Uh, imagine what I could do if I didn't crash into bombers. 
Alright, so this uh, battle ended with just 10 frags. Uh, could have had two more if I wasn't in up huts running into bombers. Um, but it really shows you what this particular plane can do. Uh, we were able to get up to speed, stay to speed most of the time, stick with the planes that thought they could get away with us, get away from us, and really kind of uh, dictate the pace of that particular battle. Um, never let them take over that mining facility, uh, which I felt was important once we got our mining facility. It allowed us to really um, pile up the points. Um, so again, this is just one of those planes you really tend to enjoy. Not a lot of people talk about the Swift anymore. Um, and to be honest, it's a lot of the planes like this Key 162 Mark III uh, with two 30s that can that don't get a lot of love, in my opinion. Uh, you can see what this particular plane can do when put in the right circumstances. Um, and <laughs> I need to pay more attention to, you know, actually in my speed. Um, because the speed is so significant on this particular plane, you really need to start slowing down if you need to slow down uh, pretty pretty well ahead of time. Otherwise, you're going to be doing a couple of things like I did in rear-ending bombers. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy this particular plane. Um, it, unfortunately, I can't play it like just you know going for down the down and like picking this as a random plane because it takes a little while to get reused to the guns. They play a little different than some of the other light fighter 30s. Um, you'd think I could get used to it a little quicker considering they're the same Aidens that are on the Hunter and the, um, well eventually will be on the P228 and Javelin that I'll hopefully have soon. But you'd think I could get used to it pretty quickly, but yeah, I guess I'm not as good as I think. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this particular video, and um, what do you think of the Swift? Were you disappointed when you got to it uh, initially, or have you have did you like it right away? Did you like it eventually, like I do? Um, or have you not gotten to it yet? Are you still uh, cruising down the Spitfire lines? If you are, uh, be prepared. This plane significantly changes your game style. Um, and not necessarily a bad thing, but um, it's just different, right? And it's pretty darn strong at that. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if so, feel free to give it a like. And I hope you have a great day.